Welcome to episode 39, Earth. Earth, Mountains and Caves. Saplings pushing their way through cracks in asphalt. Abundant food. The sound that gravel makes whenever I walk on it and it crushes and grinds together. Crystals and plants on my windowsill. Taking a moment to watch the trees sway in the breeze. As we talk about the ways in which Earth resonates for us, we ask you to join us and think about the ways that Earth might resonate for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Witchy Wit Podcast, where we look at life through a witchy lens. I'm Kimberlyn. I'm Leilani. At Witchy Wit, we explore current events, ideas, music and books, and experiences in ways that recognize energy and life in everybody and everything. We are both real witches. And we bring two real perspectives through the lens of our different ages, races, and backgrounds. With a healthy skepticism for what we have been told is true, our conversations are raw, candid, and vulnerable. Join us as we cast a spell to uncover what we each know is true in our intuitive, witchy selves. So, episode 39, Earth. 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 Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment, but let's start out by um, just kind of talking about where we are. I'm going to, I will start. I'd love for you to start. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, so um, I've just been having some, you know, families are a notion, right? Yes. I love them. Um, hopefully they love me. And, and they're still a notion. Um, I have a, um, I, my uh, aunt died a couple of years ago and mm-hmm. her husband, who is not my, you know, he's my uncle by marriage, um, is a really, really sweet guy. Um, but just hard headed, as mm-hmm. my mother used to say. And in as much as all I want him to do <laughs> is just, you know, get a, an advanced medical directive, you know, mm-hmm. figure out his power of attorney. Because most of his kids live in South Carolina. The only person who's nearby is me. <laughs> and so a couple of weeks ago, he dropped off the face of the earth. I couldn't reach him on his phone. I only had one phone number for one other person that lives in his town. He, he, he's in Texas, but it's a couple of hours away. And that person wasn't answering their phone. It turned out later I found out that that person had lost their phone. Oh, so, geez. you know, I mean, here's someone who is getting up in in, in age mm-hmm. and he has a network of people I'm, that, who will take care of him. It's not that that I'm concerned about. But, you know, I'm like his only family member who lives in town, mm-hmm. right? I mean, who lives in the state. And so, so I've just been dealing with that, and um, and he's fine. He had like a little bit of a scare, drove himself to the emergency room in his little sports car. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> which, which, you know that's a little wrong on a number of different levels, but whatever. And um, but I'm just I'm I I think I'm just confronted with the mortality of my family members mm-hmm. and and what exactly is my responsibility to them in terms of their care and and you know like. Uh, yeah, just, I can't be, sorry, it's, that was my dog. Snow, snow also is just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, he might have to go outside. But, um, but yeah, I, you know, just, I struggle with how much I need to be there for my family members. Mm-hmm. And so, and, you know, I'm still working with that. I'm still, that's something that I need to, I, I think it's going to be an ongoing issue, right? But, um but yeah, that's where I am right now. What about with you? What's going on with you? Okay. Well, there's no way to gracefully bridge what you said and what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> but but you, just, you, you hold the space for We're just going to take that. a hard turn and talk about <laughs> drinking. <laughs> well, you know, that, I, I could see the connection. <laughs> so um, there's like, it's like a pop-up, a pop-up themed bar mm-hmm. came into town and uh, I got a group of women from our circle together so that we could go to this pop-up theme bar. So there were five of us. Um, You had fabulous other plans. Yeah. But, but it was a pop-up theme bar and it was kind of like Harry Potter esque, but Mm -hmm. you know, obviously they don't have the rights to it, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they spoke in British accents. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Of varying Mm -hmm. degrees of, of success, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. they, they attempted to speak in British accents. (laughs) Um, and, but it was, but it was like alcohol themed, which mm-hmm. is n- not super duper my jam. But right. but it was but it was. Let me just tell you, it was so fun. Was it? It was so fun. So there were five of us from our circle went. Um, 
we got a lot of attention. We got a lot of attention. First of all, we all dressed fabulously yeah, I can in, our, in our various witchy bests mm-hmm. in whatever way that expressed our mm-hmm. ourselves. Uh, but like we walked in and uh, immediately like people were like, like inter- they were paying attention to us, but it was like, it's the first time I've been out with these women since the pandemic. And, and it reminded, oh, right. it reminded me of like after our retreats, when we would go out to eat and like, we just were so shiny. Yes. You know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we were just so shiny and like the people who are running the event, like kept talking to us and, and everybody was just like, who are these people? And some people thought we worked, we were working the event, <laughs> but it was super fun. And, yeah. and I, I just have to say, I have some of the best friends. These women are just so nice because I didn't want to drink all my drinks and they mm-hmm. all were just so willing to help drink my drink. <laughs> to help you out. Help my sister out. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was, oh, you, you don't want to drink that, honey? Okay, I'll help you. Because they, they gave four different theme drinks um, that had to do with this, mm-hmm. like, loose plot magic storyline. Oh, okay. Uh, that, okay. Like, mm-hmm. But, like, the, they were just so helpful in drinking my drinks. <laughs> but my favorite one had uh, dry ice in it. Oh. And it was yeah, so fun. Yeah, I can imagine. It was so well, It sounds like it was a blast. It was a total, it was a total blast. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, one of those things that, um, that, like, is kind of witchy, but it's, like, not really. But, like, mm-hmm. we can... I, you I'm, witched it up. We witched it up. Like, because it was kind of ish witchy, mm-hmm. and then the witches went, we made it real witchy, and it felt really witchy to me to be there with my witches. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. It, it was a super duper blast. Yeah. And how did you find out about it? I can't I remember you were telling me about it. Uh, but. Cookies. Marketing, <laughs> social media marketing. Oh, gotcha. Oh, okay, gotcha. It's algorithms. It, yes, it's the <laughs> not like it's all about the not algorithms. like the yummy cookies, like yeah, the okay. cookies that like are installed yeah. on me and like track me. Yeah, okay. And okay. they were spot on. I mean, they advertised to me, and I was like, within fifteen minutes, I was like yeah, contacting people to buy tickets. <laughs> like, you want to do this? Yeah, so. yeah. So, you know, the algorithm when it works, it works yeah. really well. It was great, and they so in this instance, thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. So, episode. 39 earth <laughs> Earth. <laughs> earth. Oh, you know before we talk about earth i just want to ask you really quickly what is the element that you most identify with uh what water mm-hmm. and then earth and then fire yeah. and then like a long space <laughs> before and then there's air so, what about what about you <laughs> so i'm air Really? I'm air. I'm air. And I, I, I'm, I think I'm not sure what the relationship is, but it's air and earth for me mm-hmm. in as much as I think I'm, I'm always push, pull, push me, pull you mm-hmm. type of things. Um, with, with both of those, they're, they're, they kind of, uh, they, I think that they are like my bookends mm-hmm. and, and I struggle. I, I think I have identity issues with both of them because <laughs> they, they, they both take me places sometimes where it's super comforting mm-hmm. and it's super fun and super exciting, but they also take me places where it's mm-hmm. not, it's not mm-hmm. really a lot of fun. Um, and, and I, they, I think they kind of um, are symbolic of like, you know, the, my greatest strength and my greatest weakness mm-hmm. type of stuff. So I heard once, mm-hmm. I have nothing to back this up, but I heard once somewhere when I was hanging out with witchy people that when we take the elements and you put them on the, the compass, mm-hmm. whatever the element across from your number one element is, that is the element that you least like. And that's true for me because mm-hmm. I'm water is my first element and air is the element that I feel mm-hmm. the, uh, the m- most mm-hmm. resistance to. Does that mm-hmm. fit for you? Yeah. Wa- water is like the... I, 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 we've talked about this. It scares me shitless because it's like diving deep mm-hmm. in emotions and I'm afraid I won't be able to come back up or I, I just, I repress, I push mm-hmm. away. So I, I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. To our listeners, if you, whenever you hear this, um, I would love for you to think to yourself and see if that's true and, mm-hmm. and like reach out to us on social, social media and let us know. Cause yeah, I'm just yeah. cu- anecdotally, every time we've brought that up, people have, we've talked about it and people have like mostly validated that mm-hmm, that seems mm-hmm, true. Mm-hmm. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, no, that totally makes sense for me. I, 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 to- I get that. I get that. Um, but, th- but Earth to me is like my wing. You know, mm. it's like enneagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's my wing and kind of my wingman. You know, uh-huh. so it's it's a part. It's 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 tempting. And when I'm when I'm doing it, when I'm doing Earth well, it's glorious. Mm-hmm. And and we'll be talking a little bit about that today. But um, but when I'm not, it's 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 uh, it's me at my worst. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and yeah, yeah. I think I think I know this is true from the other times because this is our third installment mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. our 
elemental series, but I think like we've seen that in all of the elements, there can be really beautiful, wonderful things. And then also really challenging, really yucky. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like anything. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's, it's, it, you know, what, where we are on that, in that moment, um, how we are Mm -hmm. reacting to things. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about, um, um, you know, the perspective that, uh, let me, the perspective <laughs> that you're coming from as you're, as we're talking about earth. Mm-hmm. You want to start? Yeah. So for me, earth, earth feels to me like my baseline, like earth to me just feels like the way that I, the element that I have with me all the time, mm-hmm. the element that I'm constantly, uh, coming back to, um, the, the element that the element that I that I'm just with all the time and that almost like your best friend, like that's the way Earth feels. Like I I, I always circle back to Earth. I'm always with Earth, um, kind of embodied in like let's say I'm like working, I'm like typing away, type 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 type. I'll stop for a moment. And I'll look out and I'll look at a tree, you know. And that's just like one small example, but that's just kind of that's I feel like that's my relationship with Earth. It's just kind of my, I mean, my foundation, which is like what I was just going to say. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, which which is what earth is. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm totally obsessed with trees. I know that you are. Yeah. (laughs) In fact, I think from my, my first time we were out at camp in, in California, I think the one picture, because I didn't take, I, you know, I didn't carry my phone around mm-hmm. for, for pictures and stuff like that. And I think the one picture I have of, is you standing on like a, a fallen tree. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yes. So just so our listeners know, like, I'm really obsessed with trees. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> like, really obsessed with trees. She's truly, I don't know if the, the word tree hugger is the exact word I would use, but. But I or, literally that's do. Kind of, yeah, that's, I was going to say that's in the common parlance that we, we, we call, definitely yes. call you a tree hugger. So I'm super obsessed with trees um, for a lot of reasons, but a lot of it has to do with their earth energy. But I just love trees. Like, I love trees so much that I bought my house because of the trees. Of the trees. Like, my <laughs> realtor was like, what type of house do you want? And I was like, I want big trees. <laughs> Okay, cool. But like, what house do you want? I want big trees. <laughs> Get me the trees. We'll figure out the rest. And the first thing I did was like, look up the house on Google Maps to see if there were trees. Uh, so, and then I like knocked my back fence. Well, a tornado knocked my back fence down. Mm-hmm. And then instead of rebuilding it, I like left it down because mm-hmm. I like the view of the trees. Because I, I live by a green belt. So also that. So mm-hmm. that's the perspective that I'm coming from with mm-hmm. Earth. Mm-hmm. What about you? So... Uh, you know, I remember I mentioned this push me, pull you, that, mm-hmm. you know, with earth and the, I'm just going to mention the one time when I was totally embraced by and embracing earth for me. And, um, to, and it was right at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm. And one of the things that the, the pandemic gave me was the time to go and situate my back porch so I could actually spend time on it. I hadn't, I would, you know, barbecue and I'd just kind of sit at the table, but it was never a consistent thing where day after day after day, every morning I would journal, I would drink my coffee. I would, you know, be out on that back, on that back porch. And there's a tree, literally a tree right in front of where I was. And, and a little, I had a little horny toad lizard, you know, mm-hmm. horny toad lizard, I think. Mm-hmm. It would, and, uh, he, it, and it would come up and go about halfway through the tree, up the tree. And I'd wonder, because there's screen between us, I'd wonder if it really knew I was there or not, or if it cared. Mm-hmm. And it would just sit there and we'd just kind of stare at each other for hours on end. And to me, I just, I just remember sitting in that place. I remember making uh, a salad of, of, um, of mango and tomatoes and avocado and just, and, and it just seemed to me that that whole period was just earth for me. It was just, Mm. I was there, I was in my yard. Um, I was actually watering then. So things were pretty great. (laughs) (laughs) And, and I just remember just feeling embraced by earth and just sitting there and just for hours on end, just absorbing the feeling of, of, of my, of my backyard. So, so that's to me like that, you know, when I, that I'm not pushing against it. I'm not trying to pull myself away. I'm, it, I'm just, I'm sitting there and we're being it. We're being ourselves. Mm-hmm. Earth is being earth. I'm being me. And it's a wonderful thing. It's mm-hmm. a, yeah. That's really beautiful. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't, 
I, I, it, it's kind of this halcyon moment, you know, like this really brilliant moment. And, and I keep trying to get back to that, <laughs> you know, like the, the, the salmon swimming back upstream. Yeah. I'm trying to, I keep trying to get back to that because it was, and I, you can't recapture it because it was, it was a moment that's gone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, um, I, but I, I want that feeling again. Mm -hmm. And that to me is the, that's when it's just me and earth and we're, you know, we're there. Can I ask a question? Sure. Does that feeling happen in a different way, but maybe a related way? Like whenever we're either at at like a camp or at retreat, because it sounds like Mm -hmm. it's the slowing down. Yes. Totally. Communing at camp, at camp. I (laughs) remember. So one remember, I don't know if you remember this. Was it the last, no, it wasn't the last time. The time before that, the path that I was in was about uh, was about the Fae. And I just remember, I mean, you know, me and however many pounds I was at the time with the knees that I have, I just remember jumping from boulder to boulder mm-hmm. and over falling. Because this is out where the redwood trees. And so, you know, when you're jumping over a redwood, mm-hmm. it's not like jumping over a little tree. You know, just like climbing up trees. Mm-hmm. And, and then like two days later... My body was like, "What the fuck were you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I get it there, and and sometimes I just go, you know, you have to, you have, you have the, the little mosquito friends, mm-hmm. and you have to kind of uh, protect yourself from those. But I just remember sitting someplace at uh, midday, just kind of staring off in the distance, surrounded by these huge, magnificent trees that have been there for like a hundred years, mm-hmm. and I, I get it there too. I remember mm-hmm. you laying. Mm-hmm. belly on the ground <laughs> <Do> you- <laughs> and you were listening to a sapling do you remember oh, yes, 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 I, I was listening to what was growing yeah i was listening to it grow yeah yeah, yeah. i remember walking by and you're just like face planted down on the ground and i was like what the and then i realized you're just laying there and there's this little sapling <laughs> yes that was my little friend we yeah we talked we talked a lot that week yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so <laughs> I, so see, I kind of uh-huh. have, I don't have the same relationship you have with trees, but that sapling and I, we mm-hmm. were, you know, we, we were like mm-hmm. I and I, we were, uh, what is it? Mano a mano. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So I have had it other pla- other places. I also had it once. Oh, this would have been in the eighties. I was with a friend and we were in the black forest in, Ooh. in Switzerland, wow. you know, going from like Austria to Switzerland. And I just remember... You know, well, first of all, looking for Heidi and the, in the, mm-hmm. you know, and the cows with the cowbells. And the, but I just remember sitting there and um, just kind of absorbing, you know, being in the mountain. I mean, these are mountains. We don't know from these mountains. Mm-hmm. I mean, these mountains, mm-hmm. are, these are real mountains. We don't know that this stuff mm-hmm. in, in, in this country. But, um, you know, and looking down at one point and just seeing this, this huge, this incredible vista and... I was literally sitting with my back to a, uh, like a, a tree, a tree trunk or whatever, and kind of getting into the same thing, just sitting there. And I had like a little cheese sandwich. And so we'll talk about food in a, in a bit, but, you know, just kind of sitting there. And my my friend is very much, she's much more of a city girl. And so she was kind of like, you know, not, not. Well, yeah, she was kind of like looking at her watch and mm-hmm. kind of humming and she'd look over at me and I would just kind of sit there like staring. And I think she was kind of. Kind of hoping like we were going to eventually move or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, that that kind of anxious. Yeah. Like, like let's know. wrap this up. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but you're on Redwood sapling time. You're on like, exactly. like let's, this is going to take a while. This exactly. is earth. This is earth energy time. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, but at the time I didn't know that what mm-hmm. is what it was. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times when I've experienced it, a lot of times uh, uh, before, like the past 20 years or so, um, when I experienced it, I didn't quite, I couldn't quite identify what it was about Mm -hmm. it. I just knew that I felt at home. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about kind of what earth means may, maybe in, I don't know, in, in, in witchy thinking, um, and maybe how it plays out maybe in the mundane world too. But Mm -hmm. what are some of the ways that, uh, that speak to you of earth? The the first one for me is, is the correspondence of the direction of north. Mm-hmm, like we mm-hmm. already kind of mentioned that. So do you mind if I just... Yeah, So for, for those of you who may not be aware of this, um, the, the way we often utilize uh, the elements, um, if you think of a compass, and so east would be air, south would be fire, west would be water, and then north would be um, earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that, that's like my number one mm-hmm. whenever I think about that. 
But mm-hmm. I think it's because of like being more of an elemental witch. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Like elements are really important to me in ritual, so I always have uh, like an like some sort of altar, although it's normally not an altar, but like some sort of thing. Oh, right, right. I remember, yeah. 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 Like mm-hmm. with, so like in the north section of my altar slash whatever it is, mm-hmm. I would have like tree yeah. type things. Rocks. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, I definitely north. For me, a lot of it is, um, you know, we talked about it being this foundation, you know, earth being under our feet. And so, you know, it, no matter what else we do, it, earth is there. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I guess if we fell off the, well, if we fell off the planet, we'd be in space. Right. Right. So, so, (laughs) so earth is always going to be there. And so that foundational element of it, but also for me, um, a big part of it is kind of how we symbolize it in a number of our different, um, practices. So one is, um, so, uh, uh, earth is North. Mm -hmm. Um, in the seasons, it's also winter. Mm-hmm. And and just that idea of winter north, I think of maybe fallow fields. Um, so it's our foundation, but it's also a place in which things might take place under the surface. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, often when I think of north, I think of growth that may not be readily apparent just yet. I love that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, it reminds me of like uh, like animal animals that burrow like down into the earth, mm-hmm. uh, or um, like caves. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, which is like super earthy to me. Um, like any time I've been in a cave, I always get I feel like I'm inside of I feel like I'm inside of the goddess. Like I feel like I'm like in her like ribs or like in her like stomachs stomachs. Somebody's. Yeah, well, maybe she's like a maybe cow. She has multiple. <laughs> Hathor is a cow, right? right. So she has she she has multiple. Okay, there we go. Right. I'm in, like I'm inside of her somewhere. Normally, yeah, it feels yeah. like her ribs are like mm-hmm. some somewhere. Like I'm touching my like rib oh, cage, gotcha, lung area. Gotcha. Like I always feel like I'm somewhere in there in her, um, uh, or mountains, which to me feels like the opposite of caves. I don't. know. There's zero logic there. That's all intuition. But like mount, like mountains also like. I'm, so I'm super obsessed with trees, but like mountains are also super earthy to me. Canyons are super earthy. Yeah, they're all they're all manifestations of earth, right? To just different mm-hmm. ways that earth, you know, responds to the elements, mm-hmm. right? So mountains are volcanic eruptions. There's, we're gonna have somebody listen to this, and they're gonna be like, "Ugh." Like, but yeah, yeah. Well, and, as I, and I tell my students this: I said, "You're you're hearing about science from a musician, okay? Yes, just yes. just just so you know, okay? Right. right. <laughs> um, so so so." Um, it's funny that you said that because the, another time that I felt that way, and I totally didn't know why, um, I, this was back in the eighties, <laughs> um, and friends and I had gone to spelunking in Wisconsin Ooh, uh-huh. and I just remember there's some parts where I thought I was going to be super claustrophobic. Um, cause I can, I, you know, every once in a while I can get that way. And cause you're literally going through these tunnels. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the tunnels are, uh, like you would get through it easily, mm-hmm. but for me it's a, you know, I have to just be a little bit more careful. And, um, and I just, but I just remember there was one part where I just, I thought I'd be freaking out because it really is kind of close and you could see that it widens up, but the part you're in is very close. Right. And I just stopped for a moment and I remember the people that I was with thought that I was scared or I'm Mm -hmm. not quite sure exactly what they thought, but it was just a moment of kind of like you say, you're in her ribs. Mm -hmm. I just felt as if I was or the womb or Mm -hmm. something. I just felt really hugged Mm -hmm. by by the the stone, you Mm -hmm. know, and, and just, I just stopped for a moment and said, and, and, you know, just felt all of this. I mean, I was literally under a mountain. Mm -hmm. And so there was this weight above me and weight around me and weight below me. And instead of me feeling frightened about it, I just felt embraced by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Earth to me also tapping into that has a lot to do with sleep and then Mm. also death. Because I think, like, whenever I think about going back to my obsession with trees, I'm like, <laughs> I love trees so much, um, you know, and I think about it, and then this was, like, years and years ago, but one time I was like, one day I want to be a tree. And then I realized, I might get teary-eyed. Yeah. And then I realized that, like, someday I will. Uh, you know? Yes. Because um, yes. it was just one of those things where I was like, Some, I would like to be a tree. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then it, like, hit me, like, bam. And I was like, oh, like, and I had known, like, of mm-hmm. course, like, you mm-hmm. know, like, I always have thought about, you know, when we die, you, whatever, mm-hmm. but like the idea of like really like on a spiritual level being like, Oh, like one day I actually will, will be a tree. I will be uh, back as a tree again, yes. you know? Uh, so, so 
to me, like the, the earth is like the ultimate receiver and the ultimate life bringer and then the ultimate life taker. That's amazing. I really, I, that I, I, I love that imagery and I, I, I don't know if ultim- if I thought like that far along, but yeah, that's mm-hmm. amazing. I um, yeah, I have to, I have to, I have to do some thinking about that. And when we talk about food in just a, like mm-hmm. a little bit, like mm-hmm. again, like that tapping into like the giver of life and then the receiver of life. Oh yeah, so so yeah, I don't know if we talked about this in in our we we make a little outline that we kind of start <laughs> with and you know we see where we go from there. But one of the things that I I think about. A lot because I used to do a lot of I don't do it right I haven't been doing it recently but um, I do do a lot of fermentation and so that idea of of alchemy mm-hmm. you know, where you take something and it becomes something else and the earth is the ultimate alchemist right it takes it takes you know what I mean it takes leaves or me or you know bodies or mm-hmm. chicken wings or something mm-hmm. and and it brings its enzymes and it calls its little wormy friends Mm -hmm. and you know probably other things that we don't want to think too much right about right Mm -hmm. now and they all convert that into different things Mm -hmm. they convert that into obviously to food for 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 things but it also converts it it basically we end up being soil Mm -hmm. you know and we being we end up being food for other things and we end up you know actually making that tree you know nourishment for the tree Mm -hmm. and yeah yeah, I love that. I love it too. Yeah, yeah, I do. I I love it, and 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 the earth just does it, mm-hmm. right? So I, I think people who compost see this most, right? Mm-hmm. They, you know, they can, you can, like I used to have a compost spinner where you put the compost in there and then you turn it and you can put the leaves in and you can check the chemical, com- mm-hmm. you know. So within two weeks, you can have you from from garbage uh kitchen garbage and leaves and stuff you can actually have compost that you can use in your garden that's so cool but you know what the earth's going to do that anyway it, it takes a, it takes a mm-hmm. little bit longer right mm-hmm. but basically it just takes all of these things and it makes them better mm-hmm. it makes them useful it makes them it turns them from trash um into gold mm-hmm. and um and it does and it and it's i mean i'm sure there's a a wisdom and a consciousness that's behind it, but it basically just does it because that's what it is, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think that that's something that um, is, is really miraculous because mm-hmm. we, because I, as a human being, spend so much time trying to change things, trying to change myself, trying to change my students, trying to, you know what I mean? Just trying to make everything different. And I suppose if I just maybe gave a, gave up the effort, this is the lesson I can learn from Earth, that if I stop striving so much and just and just allow myself to be, I could probably do or not do. <laughs> do or not do. Uh, but I could probably be more essentially what I am and actually probably contribute more to the planet than all of the rushing around that I do. Mm-hmm. And I think the earth is a great, is the great receiver. Mm-hmm. Like we're mm-hmm. all going back there. And which is one of the things that I find so interesting well, I wasn't planning on us talking about that okay. for a while, but <laughs> like in this episode, but one of the things I find most interesting is in, uh, in like our modern relationship with death, with like the putting people in coffins, like putting people in steel coffins. I was just thinking about that when you said, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then put, and then in, in, in addition, so we seal them in these coffins and then we put them in these cement boxes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In the, in the ground. And then sometimes we don't even put them in the ground. Mm-hmm. We put them above the ground, you mm-hmm. know, and I understand there's like flooding and stuff like mm-hmm. that, especially mm-hmm. in Louisiana. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, it feels to me like we're, we're like, how far away can we get from the, yeah. From how, how far can we separate ourselves yes. from natural processes? Yeah. And, from the earth, yeah. from mm-hmm. all these natural processes. Mm-hmm. And I think in, in, in one way, like, and one way, you know, it's, it's like just these things where we're like, we're like boxes. But like when I look, whenever I look at it, from a witchy perspective, I'm seeing like, okay, this is us resisting death. This is us resisting transformation. This is us. Ooh, transformation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. is us resisting this deep connection with this element of earth. Because when we really consider earth, we have to consider our connection to it and the fact that we came from it and one day we'll go back to it. Like, there's no denying that. We can't, we can avoid swimming. We can avoid going in the ocean. We can avoid rivers, but we can't avoid, we can avoid fire. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully, (laughs) (laughs) but, but like we cannot avoid, you can't avoid earth, the earth. Mm -hmm. That's deep. <laughs> Much like the earth, right? <laughs> I, I was trying, I was going to hold off saying that, but I said, okay, let's just go ahead and say it. Would you say but that you, you dig it? I, ah! <laughs> you, you silly girl. I, I rock. That you, oh. <laughs> I love you so much. Could we maybe let's spend a little bit of time about talking about how we interact with the earth ritualistically? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you and I are both like in real earth energy, right? Where it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every, Let's do this. Everything yeah. is just kind of slow. Yeah. Uh, so I was just re- uh, reading a little bit because they actually, it's an Amazon Prime show now, The Wheel of Time. So I was reading some of the books, which are like, I mean, they're just, they're like stupidly long. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I get kind of frustrated with the characters anyway. But one of the things that they have, and I think they, oh, it's like the Ents in, um, in Lord the, the Lord Rings. of the Rings, my favorite character. Yeah, yeah, yes, they, yes, yes. <laughs> well, they have these uh, 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 ogiers. That's what they're called in this, and they and they talk about being hasty. You know, don't be so hasty. And and the the guy, he's like eighty years old, and he's really considered a teenager. Mm-hmm. And he and he ran away, and and he said, ah, oh, the elders just think I'm so impulsive. <laughs> And I just love that because the uh, you know you you look you look at something like the Grand Canyon, mm-hmm. and it's so eternal. I mean, it's not because it's it's an example of change, right? And right. It's, it's example of of water and earth creating something that is totally different from what from where either one of them started, right? Mm-hmm. Over the period of millennia mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and. And it's just, you know, for, for people who have the lifespan of, you know, if we're lucky, 100 years, you know, mm-hmm. 80 to 100 years, it it just, it just, it's, it, it, it's awe-inspiring, but it also gives me such a perspective of what's really, um, what's real. I don't know if the word is life, but, but, you know, what's really, I'll just say life for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. But we digress. Where were we going? Wait, let's- <laughs> It's a beautiful thing to that's but that's so earth. We're just like this is the way this is where we are. You're right. So 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 ritual. Yeah. Earth and ritual. So it's funny you should mention that because um you know we're we're getting ready to do a ritual for Beltane. Mm-hmm. Um, this we're recording this in in April and you know we're coming up to Beltane and what we're doing, in my opinion, is kind of like, you know, Beltane, people think of jumping the bell fire mm-hmm. and, you know, fire, blah, 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 and spring and all this. But the one that we're doing is like pretty earthy. It you? is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and in fact, the last couple of times we've done Beltane, you, it's been your Beltanes and we did, oh, here we go. Uh, the last one we did was water Beltane. Cause wasn't that where we, did, did we take baths? We took baths. We took baths. And the one before that, we had fire. We did. How did you get Beltane so, two years in a row? I, I'm slowly working my way through. I, I, well, I looked at it, but I'm slowly working my way through the four elements. Okay, there we go. Okay. Because okay. Beltane to me, well, now we're talking about Beltane, is very <laughs> sensual. <laughs> Let's bring it back to Earth. Very okay. sensual, but mm-hmm. Earth in yeah. rituals. <laughs> I'm sorry. I but, <laughs> okay. Okay. We can focus, really. Okay. okay so for me, Earth and rituals. <laughs> Thank you. I... Uh, so I had this really magical experience one time in a ritual where I think it was more towards like the beginning of my practicing in, in a group, mm-hmm. but somebody that I was with was just like, if you want earth, like, like, you know, we're all like, we were trying to use fancy words and like calling in earth and all these ways. And they, and they were like, just reach down and touch the ground, just grab a rock. And, and that, I mean, that was like over a decade ago, mm-hmm. but for me, that I think because I'm such a physical person, that's how I like to connect to earth and ritual. Mm-hmm. I like to bend down. I like to put my hands on the ground, especially if we're outside, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. rub them around in the dirt or in the mm-hmm. grass or on like in the gravel or like even, it doesn't even matter. Like we could even be inside on the floor. But, and then I, when I'm on, like if I'm inside, I picture like below, like what's below until I get down to like the ground. Um, but like for me, that's connecting with earth or taking rocks and like, um, banging two rocks together and like mm-hmm. hearing mm-hmm. them, feeling how hard they are, rolling them around in my hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I, you know, it's so funny because so much of what we do in retrospect, I realize that I'm kind of doing, I'm kind of invoking, no, no matter what the ritual is, I think I kind of invoke um, earth a lot when we trance. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I invoke earth, um, you know, we, we, we invoke the, the directions, etc. as part of ritual. But often when I'm thinking about casting sacred space, I'm thinking of you know, of, of sacralizing that part of the earth that we're in at that point. Mm -hmm. It's already Mm -hmm. sacred. It's already sacred, but recognizing Mm -hmm. that it's already, that Mm -hmm. it's already sacred when we, when we cast the circle. And, um, and then, uh, I think of it as, you know, when we're grounding, um, to, to kind of, you know, be present in the ritual. So we kind of drop away, you know, the mundane stuff and, and, and kind of focus on being there. And then I think of it a lot when ritual is over, um, well, we'll act, well, we'll talk about food in a moment, but the idea of, you know, what is it that's going to get me safely home again, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I, I, when I think of being present, I often think of earth. Mm-hmm. And so to, 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 to get back from ritual, so I'm not wackadoodle, <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I try to think of grounding myself mm-hmm. and I often think of, um, you, you know, like a, a, a space and, and the space to me is, rep, is reflective of, reflective of earth. Earth, earth just feels, it feels like this basket that holds so many of the mm-hmm, things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and even though we aren't technically an elemental group, mm-hmm. I, I guess that's what happens maybe when so many of the priestesses are elemental, <laughs> but the whole, like the ritual just turns like, even though very, we may not like overtly say it, it's very it's elemental. very element, mm-hmm. very elemental. But, 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 you know, so, but here's the thing, earth to me is very, it's, so we, you, we talk about the mundane world as opposed to the witchy world, but earth to me is kind of like that bridge that encompasses both. Mm-hmm. And because there's so much that people may not recognize as earth, in, in the mundane world, right? Right. But, um, but, it, but it still exists. And, and uh, you know, we, we, so we talk about north, and I was talking about this idea of winter and maybe things that are fallow. But earth, at least in tarot and in other um, traditions, also is abundance, mm-hmm. right? You mm-hmm. know, so like the cornucopia with food just spilling out of it and the idea of feeding and home and hearth and family, that's all earth too and 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 it's the the richness of earth so we talked about um, earth as this composting thing but what happens in all of that composting is just just this abundance of rich soil that makes for you know abundance of food and flowers etc mm-hmm. etc i'm seeing the pentacle like the in the rider weight the pentacles mm-hmm. with like all the grapes and all yes. the abundance mm-hmm, mm-hmm, on mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. yeah I, I always think of the 10 the 10 of the 10 of uh of um well, it's pentacles or whatever, or discs yeah, yeah, or, whatever. or discs, yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 the ten is isn't that with with their hands up and like ten of them and 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 it's like the sun is shining and and there's a a, a, a field of growing grain mm-hmm. and something. I mean, it's just like abundance. And so, yeah, yeah, that's a that's another element that we didn't hadn't mentioned before, but it's a, a really powerful one for me. And I like that you talk about the bridging between the sacred and the mundane mm-hmm. because Earth is my way. I'll a lot of times of mm-hmm, accessing mm-hmm. the sacred and mundane life. Like I mentioned, looking out of my window at the tree, mm-hmm. you know, or there was for a while, there was a hummingbird in the tree uh, outside of my office. Mm-hmm. I lost it. I, 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 mean, remember, I, just, I remember. You gave yeah. me, you gave me binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> I would just stand there like staring at the tree with the binoculars from my classroom. Uh, or like one of the things that I remember a moment that I remember realizing I was different from others was back when I was in college and I lived on campus my freshman year of college, and I would walk from my dorm um, through, like, kind of the backside of the campus where a lot of the older buildings were. And there was this old arena that wasn't really used anymore. Like, the arena was, like, so old that it had, like, the wooden folding seats. Oh, my there. gosh. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember going in there and, like, seeing the wooden folding seats being like, wow, this is old. Um, also really cool. But I, I would walk around the backside, and there was this, there was this crack in the cement on my way on the backside of this building to get through the backside of the campus. So I'm like mm-hmm. in the backside of the backside mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and there's this crack and this like plant was like mm-hmm. growing up mm-hmm. through the crack. And, and I would see that plant every day, like at least five days a week, you know, so 10 times there and back five days a week. And I like watched this plant grow, 
you know, through the whole semester. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, really attached to the plant. <laughs> and I would, like, sometimes sit down and, like, be with the plant. This like is... me and my sapling. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And this was before cell phones. So, mm-hmm. like, nowadays I would probably, like, take a picture of the plant. But mm-hmm. we didn't have, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. we didn't have that back then. But I would, like, sit down and be with the plant. Mm-hmm. And and I just remember loving that plant so much. Like, you know, this has been, like, over 20 years. And I yeah, still, think, still, about, remember it. I still yes. think about the plant. Mm-hmm. And then I left. And then when I when I came back the next year, like, they had, like, mowed it down. You know, of course they had, yeah. but I remember being like, "Is there any way I can save this plant? Like, can I build like a little thing around it?" Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But, um, but like, what a sacred connection in this super mundane place. Mm-hmm. But I, but even if I strip it down to, to like the essence, it was that like on my walk to class in this super mundane place, the backside of the backside of this college campus. Like I had these moments of of sacred connection mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with a plant growing up in a crack. Yes. So I can imagine. Well, first of all, how not uh, maybe maybe the word isn't powerful, but just how impactful that 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 little moment in your day was. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's also kind of that idea of the power of Earth. You know, that in a place that's super human. Uh, oriented and human developed that you know that plant was growing up in, in you know in the crack in the pavement mm-hmm. and it's gonna and that's earth it's you know no, no matter what we do as humans to kind of groom it and 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 uh, manipulate it and 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 kind of imp, you know put our own stamp on it the earth is still there mm-hmm. you know yeah it feels it feels like this like sense that we can't contain earth energy is wild mm-hmm. and it and it will and it will, is earth is gonna earth right mm-hmm. and like we earth is gonna earth. <laughs> and we can try to contain it right mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. we lay the mm-hmm. cement down mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. the cement cracks well why does it crack probably because the earth is moving around under right and then like that plant pops up and mm-hmm. so yeah I, I don't know like 18 year old leilani was just like obsessed with this little plant, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I think that it tapped into something much deeper than that. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, totally. like into this like idea of like the earth energy and how the earth finds a way and mm-hmm. how, I mean, there's a lot of times where I feel like I invoke that earth energy of like, okay, well, like it may take a long time. It may not look the way that I planned, but the earth energy is going to get me there. I love that. Or, I love that. Or the earth energy is going to get me. <laughs> right? <laughs> get, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, you. like, mm-hmm. if I if I don't pay attention to the messages I'm getting, the earth, it may take a long time and it might not look the way that I do, but, like, earth is going, like, the, the earth will get me. Mm-hmm. Real, literally. I have a question. Did you wear green on purpose? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I think, I mean, I think probably ultimately, yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. There we go. But okay. probably not, mm-hmm. not consciously. Okay. Gotcha. Well, it's, well, it's so funny because I'm sitting here, maybe we should switch places. I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the trees <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and seeing you wearing green and we're talking about earth and it's a wonderful experience. So. Your neighborhood does have really nice trees. They do. They do. I mean, and it you, does. It and does. you remember mm-hmm. that one time, uh, over the holidays, when your neighbor had the mirrors hanging from <gasps> hanging the- from the tree, yeah. The only thing that make can make trees better is hanging mirrors <laughs> off of them. Oh my gosh, I'm so so obsessed. And your neighbor was out there, and I was like, "Hi, I really like your trees." <laughs> 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 yes, yes, I do remember that. They didn't do that. Th- that was for Christmas two years ago. Mm-hmm. They didn't do that this past year, but they did something different. But yeah, I'll, and that's another thing. I love, I love uh, Christmas trees with lights in them. It could be the I, my favorite is the white light, but it could be any type of lights. I just love that, and I love on the river. So when we did mm-hmm. the river barge, you know, uh, uh, at, at Christmas. Um, going down the river, singing and playing our drums and whatnot, and above us are all of these lights hanging from the trees. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my god, these incredible. beautiful trees! Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they, they, even though we live in South Texas, they're on a river, so yes. they are these mm-hmm. magnificent trees. Like, Earth is going to find a way. Yes, exactly. And they're like here, and they're hugging the river, mm-hmm. and they're arching up over, and the lights are entwined in them and dr- mm-hmm. and dripping from them. Yes. And, oh, and yes. we're going underneath them on a river. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> The river walk is so witchy. It is so witchy. And so even even when it's like totally like crammed with people, mm-hmm. it's still very magical. Yeah. I just, I love the feeling. So the river walk, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with San Antonio, is, um, you know, so the river level is, a, in many places, it's about a... a a floor, like mm-hmm. the, the equivalent of a, of a building floor, lower than the street level. And so, you know, you know it's there and you can see it from the streets. And, and, and But when you go down the stairs to it, it's like each step is taking you 
down, down, it gets witchier down. and witchier, and you're on the river, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you're surrounded by these trees, so it's water, but you also mm-hmm. have the trees, and you have, like, the path that the Army Corps of Engineers mm-hmm. put down in the 30s or whatever, um, but it's just this wonderful, to- this total experience, and then, of course, there's the shopping and all that kind of stuff, but outside of that, in, in places where we don't have all of that on the river walk, I, it's just, it's, it's magical it's to me. Su- yeah, it's super elemental. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. okay, the one earth section that mm-hmm. I want to, and now that we're talking mm-hmm. about the river walk, mm-hmm. over in, so, it's over in this section called the Museum Reach. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is this less commercialized area. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's the there's the center of the river walk where there's, like, Dick's Last Resort sort of energy, you <laughs> yeah. know? A lot of tourist shops. Yeah, touristy and shops yeah. Mm-hmm. and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's still cool, but, like, it's just very downtown- uh, but but you move you move away from that and in the museum reach section mm-hmm. and um, there's art installations mm-hmm. and the one of the cave oh the grotto yes the grotto mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh my yes. god very much yes yeah I love that I I love I love walking on the part of the river I mean you know okay it's fun right by downtown mm-hmm. but I love the part coming from. Um, you know the northern part down to the to downtown area, mm-hmm. and then below it. Have you ever walked on that part? Oh my fucking god! Mm-hmm. Well, it's just amazing. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, it's so great. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I really love it. And you can, you know, you can see like there's a lot of wildlife and stuff mm-hmm. along the along the the river because there's a river. Um, but it's just, and you you forget that you're in uh, the seventh large, largest largest mm-hmm. city in, in the United States. Mm-hmm. You forget that when you're walking along the river and when you're on the river walk. So it's amazing. Super elemental. Super elemental. Lots of good, got lots of good earth energy with some water energy. Totally, totally, totally. So, um, so maybe we can talk a little bit about um some of the chants that we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's. You mentioned the fact that there's so many people who respond to the elements, whether mm-hmm. or not they consider themselves elementals or, or elementals or not, and. When we get going on some of our chants, particularly the ones that are are, are, are focused on a specific element, it just gets so it's it's waff. It's mm-hmm. witchy as fuck. Witchy I as mean, fuck. It's, just, it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> and so some of them, um, you you mentioned uh, my roots go down, mm-hmm. and I was wondering, can we sing some of them? Just sure, really briefly. Okay, yeah. you do this one. Yeah, yeah. You okay? And then so so th- this one is kind of a zipper chant, and and you can just kind of like make stuff up. So right, am I singing? Are you singing with me? I'm gonna sing with you. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> my roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down. I am a rock sitting still. I am a rock sitting still. I am a rock. Sitting still, my roots go down. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down, down to the earth. My roots go down. I am a tree dancing in the breeze. I am a tree dancing in the breeze. I am a tree dancing in the breeze. My roots go down. And then we would just keep singing and, and other women would just join in mm-hmm. and sing. They'd make they'd sing a little verse and then we'd all just chime in and mm-hmm. sing whatever they sang. I love that one. It's such a great way to practice deep listening through song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I always feel myself just sinking deeper and deeper each time we get to the mm-hmm. chorus. Um, I, I feel coming, I, sometimes I feel like I'm coming out because I have to listen mm-hmm. and et cetera for the, for the verses, but then sinking on that, sinking on the, um, on the chorus. And then, um, oh, the one that you, I don't know if we ever sang it before you brought it is the, um, Earth My Lover. Yeah, that came from Witch Camp. Oh my gosh, I love that. Yeah. Shall we sing a little bit of that one? Yeah. Okay, um. Deep, dark, velvet earth, my lover, open my mind and open my body, wet and welcoming, sweet, surrendering, starlight and bone, the power from within. So, so hot. Yeah. yeah. It's really, I mean, earth is hot. Earth, you know, mm. it's, I, I earth know is sexy. I, I never thought about it that way until just recently. Mm-hmm. I would say 
it might have been about the time it might have been so that was a Beltane ritual that you did maybe about seven or eight years ago yeah that was my first of, of my uh my long-running series of trying to do all four elements in Beltane <laughs> <laughs> It's like, screw the fire. Let's see what else we can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And I, so that's when I really began to think about the, I mean, I, I think I had before, but really in terms of, you know, Beltane and ritual, the richness of mm-hmm. earth and all of the things that it can mean to me. So mm-hmm. I have you to thank for that. Thank, thank you, you so much. That Bringing was sensuality to the elements mm-hmm. since. Mm-hmm. Because like. Since whatever, whatever the year was. I know, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Since the early 2000s. I there don't we know. go. I like that. I like that. So let's take a, another kind of detour because I mentioned the abundance mm-hmm. of, um, of earth. And I think for me, for the longest time in my mundane life, the earthy, the stuff that I associate now with earth, I had associated with uh, food, mm. like family getting together. Mm-hmm. I used to joke about my mother the, with the groaning table, like the table having so much food mm-hmm. on it, it's just barely, you know, sitting up there. And um, the hearth and welcome, welcoming, mm-hmm. you know, the um, welcoming and opening up your heart and opening up your hearth and everyone, you know, being there, c- celebrating, being to celebrating being a family or celebrating being a unit or whatever, and celebrating through eating. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I, you know, I was wondering if you'd like to talk a little bit about, you know, how, how that abundance of food or that, or food in general might uh, resonate for you in terms of either ritual or something. Yeah. I love, I love, uh, using food in ritual because Mm -hmm. for me, I like taking the food and it's, so it, it, it's one of those things that crosses through the liminal space because Mm -hmm, it goes mm -hmm. from outside my body, inside my Mm -hmm, body. mm -hmm. So for me, like using these food things, using earth as a way to internalize whatever magic we're doing, which is external. And then I eat that food and I put it inside of me. Like that's earth transporting that energy into me and then like inside of me Mm -hmm. and then literally making that energy into me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So earth is just this really cool way for me to literally embody I was going to say, because we become Earth-like, right? Yeah. Because just as Earth creates compost, we, well, we create shit, but, you know, but, but, in the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but here's the thing. We, we, we take something in, our body creates this process that changes that to energy. Yeah, like you were talking sustain- alchemy before. Yeah, alchemy, yeah. That sustains us, that helps us to grow, mm-hmm. that helps us to do what we need to do. Um, we, you know, we kind of work it, it works its way further down. And then the part that doesn't, that we no longer need comes out and, and, you know, depending on how you utilize that, that could also be, you know, a wealth of, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) you can use that to kind of, I think humans poop is like the least productive. Is it? I think so. Yeah. I think, I I believe it. Yeah. Well, animals that eat grass are the best, like, you know, yeah. Cow, cow, cow manure, I think is the most useful manure. Huh. And I think maybe chicken, chicken, chicken too. I can't remember. But anyway, but yeah, so, so I mean, you heard it here on witchy wit. (laughs) Which earthy poop is the most don't useful. Say, don't, say, don't say we never taught you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but so in a way, we are earth-like. Yeah. If, if we think about transformative. it. Transformative. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're tra- transformative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, we, we're little composters ourselves. We are little composters, right? <laughs> Very productive. Mm-hmm. And I also like eating during ritual, like you talked Mm -hmm. about gathering. So eating during ritual, eating after ritual, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just as a way of, of commuting. Um, and I'm, I'm like so extroverted. I'm like at the very edge of the extrovert. Like I'm about to fall off the edge of the extrovert Mm -hmm, scale. mm -hmm. Like that's how extreme I am. And even so a lot of times after ritual, I want to be quiet, but like, uh, eating Mm -hmm. magical food allows me to connect and commune in that quietness. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's so funny because um, that's it, that's one of the ways in which you see that kind of embodiment. So um, even within a number of traditions, like the Christian tradition, that idea of, of you, know, the, 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 you know, they have communion, right? And so that idea of taking in something and it being transformative mm-hmm. is a is another hallmark of, of many traditions. And, and so they kind of recognize that process 
unfortunately, it's, it just seems to be kind of uh, embodied in humanity as opposed to recognizing that it's, for, for, in my opinion, mm-hmm. that it's, rec- it's not recognized as being a part of the world mm-hmm. around us. But, but yeah, that idea that, you know, <laughs> that's, my, that's my boy. I was, he's like, yeah, they need to recognize They need the, to recognize, yeah. The, the magic and the greater space instead uh, of just uh, in this isolate. Exactly. Thank you for your commentary, Snow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right. <laughs> um, Another place that I think is super witchy, uh, earthy energy is food on retreats. Ooh, yes. Especially yes. in our, our retreats within our circle where we are, we are preparing the food oftentimes somewhat communally, like on teams, mm-hmm. and then we consume the food together. Um, I swear I, I eat better. And not only is the food I eat better, but the eating, the act of eating is better. Um, and I'm so attuned for, because of whatever we're doing on the retreat, I'm so attuned to really take in the green of the salad, you know, the red of the beets, you know, like whatever it is. And like right. really, instead of, instead of I'm eating food, I'm like, I'm eating these things that came from, you know, and I, I'm just, I, I feel more connected to the energy of them. Yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think some of it might just be, we're, we're so much more aware of the magic of taking a crust of bread and making it energy, mm-hmm. you know, like, uh, and, and I mean, and, and we're like a coal furnace, right? We're mm-hmm. converting, we're, we're converting something. And I, I, tr- I remember that sometimes, but I remember, but I think that, um, it's, it's something that I, that I think I should be more aware of most of the time because that act, you're, you're opening yourself up to something that's foreign to you. And you're making it a part of you. And so one of the ways I, when I do, when I am aware of that, is I think about, you know, what am I doing when I'm eating? Am I uh, watching, t- you know, like horrible crap on, on TV and take, because I'm, I'm open, I'm absorbing. Mm. And so with my food, I'm absorbing, if I'm watching Law and Order and there's, you know, <laughs> some like shitty person is like going around as a serial killer, you know, I'm absorbing that when I'm eating, Right. Because I'm opening myself up. The energy is about me taking in something that's outside of me, into me. And so um, I, for a while there, I've kind of fallen off that wagon. But now I'm, I've been reminded. <laughs> for a while there, I would just eat. And if I, would, if I was going to read or something, I would only read something that was going to be empowering or uplifting or whatever. Because I'm so absorbent at that moment. I'm, it's like a magical kind of magnetic um, period for me that I'm taking in all of this kind of stuff. And I fallen by the wayside. Now I just I'm like scrolling social media <laughs> on the you know reading stuff on the t- on the computer, and I have to become more aware of that. I wish that I used eating as a sacred act to connect with Earth more too. Mm-hmm. Normally, I am annoyed that I have to eat because it makes <laughs> me stop or slow down, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I like to eat on the go. Mm-hmm. I like I do a lot of eating that I can drink. So I, yes. like I can, dr- I, I can drink the shake as I'm driving mm-hmm. or walking or wherever, you know, or like something that I can hold like, um, like little like breakfast pucks of food. I, was just, I remember your snack pack when we yeah. used to go to Portland, you yes. would always have like little snack yeah. things. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Cause I just, I get annoyed at having to eat because I'm go, go, going, you know? And so like, I would like personally to have a different relationship with mm-hmm, food mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and one that I see myself really enjoying, like when we do retreats, because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm held in this space where we're slowing down and connecting. Mm-hmm. And just being really mindful, right? Mm-hmm. I think that's, I think a lot of it is just being mindful of everything, everything around me when I eat. So the, the act of eating and all of the stuff that we just mentioned, the act of what's going on at the same time as eating, watching TV or, you know, sitting or, you know, commuting with my dog or whatever. And so it's just, to me, just being aware, you know, Mm -hmm. and intentional with making, making the decision that I'm not going to watch shitty TV while uh, I'm not saying that, that those shows are shitty, but I'm though, you know, some of that energy, you're, you're sitting there watching a serial killer while you eat your dinner. Yeah. So, when I think about it that way, it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so just being more intentional, I think is a part of it. Could we talk more like eating is, you know, sacred and mundane. Could we mm-hmm. talk more about ways of interacting with earth in mm-hmm. the mundane world and everyday life? Sure. Sure. Do you want to get started or? Yeah. Okay. So, mm-hmm. uh, one way I try to do it is by finding moments where I can, I'm really visual finding moments where I can connect with a visual of earth. And, and I just want to say too, that like, I, I think that sometimes as witches, 
I've noticed that there can be this sense of like elitism about um, being a witch and that like you have to go to the ocean or a giant oh, river mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to connect with water. You have to go to the redwoods or the like these crazy woods to connect with earth, uh, like whatever. You have to big, build a big bonfire to connect with fire. But like we can find, we can find the elements everywhere, mm-hmm, you know? So mm-hmm. um, currently at my, outside of my classroom, there is a plant pushing its way up through the asphalt <laughs> in a handicapped spot in like the accessible parking. Mm-hmm. And so that means it doesn't get driven on a lot. And so I'm really, oh okay, yeah. I'm really enjoying every day when I pull up to park, I try to park next to the accessible spot so that I can look out and see that. And like, that is a sacred moment for me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also reminds me of that thing yeah, you're, back you're, in college, yes, yes. but I see it and I'm like, oh, and it, and mm-hmm. it reminds me of the power of earth in that moment as I walk into my school. Mm-hmm. So for me, there's a couple of things. Um, part of it is, uh, you know, I, Mm, there's two things. One is in my house and then one is outside of my house. I, that, that just makes sense. But I, but I, I just know, you know, in the mornings I walk my dog and sometimes, you know, sometimes we just walk along the access road and it's like the car is eh, whatever. Mm-hmm. But then um, often we'll walk on the Tobin Trail or something mm-hmm. like that. And and that to me, because it's usually quiet and it's just my it's just snow and me and he's wandering around sniffing everything. <laughs> But, you know, sniffing and then, you know, checking his P-mail, I say, mm-hmm. and then, you know, leaving, leaving a message or two. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that, because it's quite, you know, except for a, bi- a bicyclist or other hiker or whatever, it's usually really quiet. And I, that to me, if I can start my morning that way, the rest of my day is so much better or, or sitting on my back porch. Right. Um, but then, um, one of the things that I, I have been doing is just sitting and you know, not embodying earth, but just thinking, okay, I'm not standing on the ground right now, but the, the, the carpet that I'm on is on a subfloor. <laughs> That's on a slab. <laughs> That's on the dirt. <laughs> you know, and so one of the things we do often in grounding is we talk about maybe a tail going down from our, uh, from our tail end and going down into the earth. And I try to, and I sometimes picture that, you know, just kind of just, no, it's there. And just kind of tapping into it, even if I'm not directly physically in contact with it, I can, um, I can pull, I can still pull on that energy. Mm -hmm. And and I do. I like bringing, I like bringing plants and stuff inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. Although I I am not, I, I, once again, I'm so go, 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 go. I'm not home very often. So I don't, I'm not reliable to like water. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we're, we're dying here. Right. And then that just doesn't feel very like earth energy supportive. It feels like I'm murdering her. So I don't want to bring that. Uh-huh. Um, but like, so maybe some plants, uh, or I try, I try to keep like my windows open mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I can see. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like one, um, my kitchen window when I, uh, so the house I, I live in, uh, I, I purchased over a decade ago, uh, like about 15 years ago. And so I've, I've, purposely like uh trimmed my hedge to grow up over my <laughs> window. <laughs> so okay. so I'm about I'm about seventy five percent there. <laughs> um, so you have a green curtain you're, you're yeah. looking for a green curtain in front of yeah, your window. To separate me and my neighbor's house. So mm-hmm. I'm like seventy five percent of the way grown up uh-huh, uh uh-huh. with the hedge covering my window. But it's wonderful. I'm mm-hmm. like in a tree. Yeah. With the, which yeah. is what I want. And so Beautiful. this is nature's curtain, right? Mm-hmm. So I like leave my curtain open and then, you know, I'm like, grow hedge, grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever been to, to my office at work? So I'm on the third floor and we have these huge plate glass windows and there's a tree right next to my window. And, and for many years until the, we had the big storm about two years ago, there was a squirrel's nest and you'd see, you know, so Aww. I'd sit there and well, and to be, to be honest, cause you know, I, I love the goddess's little creatures mm-hmm. <laughs> to a certain extent. Um, but I'm really happy that there's like three inches of plate glass yes. between the squirrel and me. Cause you know, nah. but anyway, but it's, it's, I'm up in the trees. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a tree house. So that's, that's really lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So you would, you need to come. Your come campus to has really nice trees. It really does. It, <laughs> you've noticed that. I yeah. have noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a beautiful place. Um, but one way that I, I have a couple of um, little house plants on my uh, kitchen windowsill. So when I'm washing dishes, mm. they're right there. And then I, I found 
a I, in walking I can't even remember where I was there was it, it's I think it's just a piece of weathered wood but it looks kind of like an animal with these horns growing out of it that I've had for well, after, after we're done I'll okay. Let, let's okay. see it. um that I've I've had for many years and mm-hmm. that's there and then I have a few stones um on there on there as well um and and so I have like a little bit of like a little bit of a sculpted landscape mm-hmm. right there in front of my window Oh and oh and just one other thing this is this has probably nothing to do with earth but I also have a little spider and she lives there and you know I'm assuming it's the same spider but it's been a couple of years so maybe maybe she's passed maybe on and this her is her descended. daughter yeah, yeah yeah but I you know and 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 my pet sitter knows not to give you know that that's where she lives and mm-hmm. so so but it's in, in the morning I come down she's kind of hanging out and then every once in a while she'll she's not sure she'll run up and then she sees I'm not going to harm her and she comes back down so that to me is like a little bit of the outdoors inside I love that mm-hmm uh, another way I connect with Earth in my mundane life is through connection with my sister, mm-hmm. who is an Earth mama. She is. Yeah. She has a like, lot I, of that energy. I'm, like, obsessed with trees, but I feel like my Earth energy is more, like, fangirl energy. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, Earth is so cool. The trees blow in the wind. It's like they're dancing. I like to dance. Woo, Earth! You know, like, that's how I feel. Yeah. Like, my sister is Earth. She is Earth. You know, like, she, she just is. embodies Earth all the time. And so... One way I connect with Earth is is just like letting her have free reign over mm-hmm. my house because mm-hmm. um, she has her own house that she does mm-hmm. things to, but she'll mm-hmm. bring rocks over to my house um, <laughs> because you love rocks. I do love rocks. I, I do love rocks. So, but she'll bring really cool rocks over. She puts them around my yard, uh, and then her and I also do um, like rock souvenirs. So wherever we and we didn't mean to do this, mm-hmm. but it's just kind of happened over the years. But wherever we go whenever we travel like we bring a rock home from that place Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so even like whenever we were traveling around china like we brought yeah so like we're backpacking so like we're carrying everything with us (laughs) and like in my bag there's a rock (laughs) what's what's in here rocks uh Uh, yes actually yes i am carrying i am schlepping rocks all over (laughs) asia Oh, that's phenomenal. You know, I haven't, I don't do that as consistently, but now that you mentioned it a couple of places, I remember bringing back a rock. Wow. It's cool. And I have a friend who's a geologist um, who doesn't know that I do that. And he came over to my house one time and he was like, where did you get this rock? This isn't from here. This, what about this rock? This isn't from here, you know? And because it's like every time we travel, like we go to Louisiana, Mm -hmm. we get a rock from Louisiana, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. we go to Indiana, we get a rock from Indiana. There's rocks from Missouri. There's rocks from California. Yeah, that's amazing. I like that. And and it's it's also uh um uh you, you by having the rocks you bring you bring in nature, right? Mm-hmm. But you bring in a little bit of earth, but you also bring in that energy from wherever you've been. Mm-hmm. Wow. I like that a lot. I do too. Mm-hmm. It's also a cheaper souvenir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but as someone who doesn't like a lot of stuff, yes. you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I can bring a, a rock, like a rock will call to me mm-hmm. and then I'll, I wait for a rock to call to me yeah. and then yeah. I invite it back with me. Yay. So That's lovely. I love that idea. It rocks. Thank you. Arr, you little knucklehead. <laughs> okay. The poem that we'd like to share with y'all today is called Old Mother. It's by Linda Hogan. And when I read it, it felt very elemental, but it also really embodied the energy of earth. Mm -hmm. So let me say a little bit, uh, tell you a little bit about Linda Hogan. She's a poet, storyteller, academic, playwright, novelist, environmentalist, and she writes a lot of short stories. Um, She's currently the Chickasaw Nation's writer in residence. Um, and she is uh, the recipient of the Lannan Literary Award for Poetry and is also a Pulitzer finalist. So we're going to read one of her poems. Old Mother. Sitting on the large stone, Old Mother says, I feel it breathing. And it is as if she opened the world, life where everything does breathe, like the waves of far ocean, taking in air, giving us the cloud waters, passing over us right now. The bison breathed this air, she says, and people from other nations. Don't you hear it all singing? Even the stars above hidden by daylight, the waters beneath us, and the first cry of your children when they arrive from the birth waters to air. She is the one showing away as she points her feather. Every path is right, she says, 
It matters not which one you follow. Just breathe and sing as you pass along, loving every other traveler. Thank you so much for being a part of our discussions of air. And hopefully this will uh, bring up for you some... It's not air. It's earth. (laughs) (laughs) This was very airy to me. Okay. Uh, Well, it does say feather. Yeah. That's really earthy to me, though. Yeah, no, it is earthy. It, it is. Is it's, it airy to you too? Well, it, it you know we start going, oh, we go air yeah. towards the towards the because breath yes. breathes, you know, feathers. So. Okay. Thank you so much for being with us as we journey through all four of the elements one at a time, but yet also <laughs> understanding that they are all interconnected <laughs> and supported by and engendered by Earth. Hmm. We hope you have enjoyed the magic that has unfolded here at Witchy Wit. It would be great if you would help make Witchy Wit possible and get access to exclusive content by donating on Patreon. We'd love it if you join our Witchy community and enjoy shareable content on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Would you do us a big favor and support us by rating and reviewing us wherever you get your podcasts? It's free and helps Witchy folks find us. Feel free to email us at witchywitpodcast at gmail.com. We love to hear from our community. Reach out and let us know what's brewing in your cauldron. New episodes are released every second and fourth Friday. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform so our episodes go right to your playlist. You can listen as you ride your broom. Stay Stay witchy, witchy, y'all!